Hey fellow Vault Wearers, it's Angry Turtle and we just received the patch notes for Fallout Wars update. And here we go. The Fallout Wars update is arriving today and it brings the public and custom Wars game modes to Fallout 76. We're also expanding on daily ops with double mutation weekends, new locations, a new enemy group and more. Read on to catch all the details. Just a quick info here, if you missed, unfortunately season 6 was delayed and you need to wait 2 more weeks, season 5 will last for 2 more weeks. Update highlights. New ways to play. Experience Appalachia like never before with public worlds, each public world features specialized game settings fit to a team and they are available to all players. Your world made to order. Followed first members can now create custom worlds to build their own personalized versions of Appalachia using a wide variety of modifiable game settings. Daily Ops Expansion. Our latest expansion for Daily Ops introduces double mutation events every other weekend, a new enemy group, three new locations and new rewards. Nuclear Winter Rewards. Nuclear Winter mode has been deactivated, pair coins based on progression have been added to players' accounts and Nuclear Winter cosmetics can now be earned from public events. And let's jump into details. The patch sizes starting at 50 gigab 15 gigabytes and biggest one is 23 gigabytes. Surprisingly, this time it's very similar on all platforms. Unusual. Season 5 extended 2 weeks and they saying about the bug, I will skip it, if you are interested just pause in here, read about the bug that they encounter and yeah, it's basically delayed by 2 weeks, that's all you need to know. Introducing Fallout Worlds. With this update for Fallout 76 we're introducing Fallout Worlds which offers players the ability to experience the game in unique new ways with 2 new game modes public words and custom words. First info about public words. The new public words mode will help you shake up your normal gameplay by offering special words that can have a pre-selected group of followed words settings enabled fit to a team. All players can join public words to dive into Appalachia that's widely different from adventure mode. One public ward will be available to players at a time. Currently we are planning to rotate public wards once per month so that you can regularly try out a variety of different experiences. However, rotation frequency may change in the future based on community feedback and other factors. Here are the first five public wards that you will be able to check out in game. As voted on by our public test server participants, we are starting with Happy Builder and will rotate through the rest of the following in the following order. Happy Builder reduce camp placement restrictions, relax building restrictions or map location discovered and PvP has been enabled. High risk. No fast travel, always on PvP, players drop additional loot on death, free workbench crafting and legendary item attributes have been disabled. Dweller must die. Greatly increase enemy difficulty, increase damage, increase equipment durability and dark bog weather effects. Quantum Ward. Max jump height, no fall damage, new creatures and flora and quantum storm weather. Butcher's Delight. Infinite ammo, no vats or melee attacks AP cost and enhanced disembarment. And what they didn't state it in here, at least I cannot see, those words will reset every month and there is no connection with adventure. Basically you create a copy of your character to play in those game modes and after a month this copy is erased. There is absolutely no connection with adventure mode. Custom words, that's for followed first members. Players with active followed first membership can now choose the custom words option from the play menu to create a new type of word where they can adjust a wide variety of different settings to create an Appalachia that's tailored to their liking. You are able to see me using that during the PTS, then if you are interested, you can dig out the older PTS video. 
To create a custom word, click play from the main menu, select custom word, hit select word template and then start tinkering with settings you would like to try out. Up to 7 friends can join you in your custom world for a total of 8 players per world, the same as private world. Please note, private worlds mode has been renamed to private adventure with today's update to better differentiate it from custom worlds mode. While creating your custom world, you can choose among a broad array of customization settings and let your imagination run wild with the possibilities. Here are some of the options at your disposal. And they're discussing all the options. I don't think I will read them all. There is a lot of options. I discuss them all in my PTS video. Then I will just link the PTS video if you want to see all the options. There is a lot of them. And character progression, they explaining basically there is no character progression at all. It's totally separate, only for fun, at least at this mode. I think that's the best way I can explain. If it helps you, please read through that or check out Faku on Fallout First website and you will know even more. But I think that should be clear at this point. Daily Ops Expansion. Our latest expansion for Daily Ops brings a new weekend event that amps up the challenge but offers increased rewards. Read on for a brief overview of everything we're adding to Daily Ops, including Double Mutation Weekend Events. Double Mutation Weekend Events, explained. During Double Mutation Weekends, Daily Ops will re-randomize each day with enemies who have one of eight unique combinations of two different mutations. Double Mutation Weekend events will typically run every other weekend from Thursday to Monday, starting and ending at the normal Daily Ops reset time. While a Double Mutation event is active, daring adventurers who are willing to delve into Daily Ops will earn the following increased rewards. 2 to 6 Legendary Cores for the first and all subsequent Elder Till completions, double experience during every Daily Ops playthrough, double the in-game currency rewards for every Daily Ops playthrough. Let's hope it will work. You can see my video that I did recently about those Daily Ops double and it wasn't actually working as intended on PTS. Double the danger. Check out the full list of potential double mutations that enemies can sport during the new weekend events so that you know what you will be up against. Blistering Cold. Blistering enemies have the Freezing Touch and Swift Footed mutations. Chilling Ment. Chilling enemies have the Freezing Touch and Group Regeneration mutations. Clouded Toxins. Enemies have the Active Camouflage and Toxic Blood mutations. And so on. I don't think I will read through. Check it out. Basically different combo of two mutations. We have new enemies as well, that's better. We've added communists to the pool of randomized enemy groups you may encounter in any daily ops mode. With new bows included, what's really cool. New locations. Fight your way through Arctus Pharma Biome Lab, Watoga High School and Uncanny Caveverse. All of which have been added to the randomized pool of locations for daily ops. I really like Arctus Pharma Biome Lab, that's my favorite. Rewards updates. In this update for Daily Ops, we're adding plans for two legendary weapons, new teamed cosmetics and more. Check out the full list below for new rewards you will be able to earn by completing Daily Ops. We have plan for Arctic Marine Armor, plan for Mechanics Best Friend Pipe Wrench, plan for Soul Survivor Lower Action Rifle, new outfit Black Hazmat Suit, plan for Mylur King Tube, Blood Eagle School Lord Outfit, Blood Eagle School Lord Helmet, Blood Eagle Auto Grenade Launcher Paint. Additional Daily Ops Improvement. Enemies. We've addressed a number of issues that were affecting Mathman Hatchlings and these cute but deadly creatures will once again appear when cultists are the current Daily Ops enemy group. Mutations. Volatile enemy explosion damage has been adjusted and now does health percentage based damage that can be partially mitigated by anti-explosive effects. Oh, they updated it. When they 
added it to the PTS, they said that it was fire damage added. Now they clarify that based on your percentage of your total health. That makes sense because I was testing it and it's not possible anymore to reduce this damage to zero. Then yeah, that's a change. Reset timer. We've added a timer so you can more easily check when the next daily ops reset will occur. You can find the timer in the Intel section of the detailed daily ops menu after selecting a daily op from the world activity tracker. That's actually a really useful addition. Nuclear Winter Mode Rewards. With the arrival of today's update, we have removed the Nuclear Winter game mode from Fallout 76. RIP Nuclear Winter. Alongside this change, we're granting rewards to all players who have completed at least one Nuclear Winter match and making many of the modes progression rewards available in Adventure Mode. Nuclear Winter Pennant. All players who completed at least one Nuclear Winter match will receive a Nuclear Winter themed pennant they can build in their camps. The pennant will be added to your World Decor category in the build menu within two weeks following today's update. Per coins, and it was explained before, but it's really hard to calculate how many per coins you actually will get, then I think the best way is check in game how many per coins you earn. There is some explanation if you can do calculation based on that. Now, cosmetic rewards. Many of the cosmetic rewards that could be earned by climbing over sea ranks in nuclear winter are now available in adventure mode as rewards that you can claim by completing public events. Here is the current list of events where you have a chance to earn these cosmetics. Colossal Problem, Encrypted, Project Paradise, Scorch Earth, and limited time events like Festive Scorch and Treasure Hunter. Exclusive rewards, Nuclear Winter trophies and statues will remain exclusive to players who earn them by climbing the ranks in the Nuclear Winter progression system. Then those are now legacy rewards. User interface updates. Pip-Boy. Junk acquired from scrapping items will now appear in the Pip-Boy's new tab. Pip-Boy. Inventory items can now be sorted by the stack weight. Finally, that's the one of the biggest updates everyone was waiting for. So it's so hard sometimes to figure out what weights you down. Now you can sort based off total stack weight. That's awesome. I'm probably too excited about this change, but it is awesome. Pip-Boy. When scrolling in the Pip-Boy inventory, navigating up from the top item in the list will now move the player's selection to the bottom of the list and vice versa. Then you can basically infinitely scroll over. Word. Vault 51. Alongside this update for Fallout 76, Vault 51 has now opened up for exploration in all game modes, including adventure. Follow the red wire to find your way inside and then poke around to learn more about what before, what befell the dwellers of Vault 51. Now, bug fixes and additional improvements. Of course, we stop only on important ones, but if you can read through every single one, feel free to pause the video. Emotes fix an issue that could cause a player to become stuck in an emote animation loop. That was quite annoying one, I'm happy it's fixed. Range weapons corrected the direction of the minigun's barrel spin while wearing power armor. I didn't even notice there was something not right with that. Camps and workshop fixes. Budget fix, maximum build counts now correctly account for items that are already stored. I guess that's good. Challenges daily. Cultist ghouls now correctly count toward challenges that require players to kill cultists. Daily ops fixes. Contextual ammo when using a pepper shaker with a standard magazine, enemies in daily ops will now drop shotgun shells more often. More often, I hope every time now, it should be contextual, not randomized. Daily ops bosses no longer prioritize melee attacking the player over using their primary weapons. I mean, that's good, a little bit harder, bosses. Oh, mutations. Enemies with Volatile no longer damage other enemies on death. They damage only us now. That's not helpful. 
freezing effect buffed by fixing and now it will correctly apply every time freezing enemies hits you. The toxic blood effect no longer suddenly stops applying damage. I don't think anyone was complaining, but yeah, fix is fix. Okay, another page of fixes and a lot of fixes with daily op reports, then it will be more accurate. Now we have events and quest fixes, items fixes. That's a fun one. Ammo converter fix an issue in which the ammo converter would remove or grant cryo ammo when attempting to sell or buy fuel. Localization fixes. NPC fixes. Minerva remove a number of item plants from Minerva's inventory that can be earned elsewhere, like the ammo converter and chicken coop. Power armor. NPCs who wear power armor will no longer be affected by debuffs caused by having an empty fusion core. Question is, why? Per cards fixes. Grenadier, that's a big one. You probably already know, if you don't, now properly increases the blast damage radius of grenades and all other explosions, inc including legendary effect on weapons. The radius is increased by Grenadier. Lock and load. Entering or exiting power armor no longer removes the fast reload effect. The question here is, did they fix just this one? It was a general issue. There is multiple perks being disabled by entering or exiting power armor. But good news for you guys, if you don't know, you can fix this issue by just swapping your weapon. Use the quick weapon swap button, swap it back and forth, and this issue will be fixed then. Not a big deal. Performance and stability fixes. Hopefully it will be more stable and perform better. User interface fixes. Social. Fix an issue that could cause pending friend requests to disappear after a few minutes. What about the ones that never appear? Is it fixed too? Fix an issue that could cause a player to appear offline to their friends when viewed in the friends list. I will be really happy if friend list will be improved and bugs squashed. World fixes. Environment. Corrected several locations when the player could see outside the game world. I bet there are still some left. And this will conclude the patch notes. There is not too much stuff apart from followed words. We'll see how this will go. We'll see if anything is missing from the list of fixes in this patch notes. You will guys let me know when you start playing if there is anything suspicious going on, as I'm always eager to check it out. But now, as always, thank you all for watching this video and see you guys in the next one.